There is so much to unpack with the latest Asus Zephyrus G14 that I'll be making multiple videos over the coming weeks so I can dive into every detail that really helps you understand if this laptop is the right purchase for your needs. So make sure you subscribe to that. Now, first and foremost, I want to discuss the changes in the SKUs and pricing tiers that we're seeing from last year's model to this year's model. So last year, you could get the G14 in both the Ryzen 7 5800HS and the Ryzen 9 5900HS. But this year, they're sticking with one SKU for the CPU, which is the Ryzen 9 6900HS. Now last year you could have multiple RAM configurations and that's the same with this year's model with one swappable RAM. One is soldered to the motherboard and one is swappable. And it comes with DDR5 this year with Ryzen 6000. Now the area where you really get to make some decisions is with the GPU. Now the GPU is either the RX 6700S which is the model I have in front of me. It's the more budget-friendly model, or you can get the RX 6800S. Now, if you wanna check all the live pricing of the models available right now, even last year's models, I'll link those up in the description below, and you can check out those affiliate links in the description below. I want to thank Best Buy for sponsoring this video, making it possible to create these in-depth reviews of the Asus Zephyrus G14 with the latest Ryzen 9 6900HS and AMD RX graphics. Best Buy is my go-to online and in-person store for snagging the latest laptop release. I've found that they get laptops in sooner and keep their stock longer than any other retailer. Not only do they carry the most in-demand models, but are constantly providing some of the best deals you can find anywhere online. If you're catching this video in the first week of it going live and you're looking to pick up the Asus Zephyrus G14, you can order both G14 options right now. Best Buy not only offers convenient curbside pickup, which I used to pick up my model of the G14, but also super fast delivery on thousands of items so you can get to your creative work faster. Click the link in the description below to check out the Asus Zephyrus G14 as well as some of the other latest in-demand AMD equipped laptops. Now I mentioned earlier that I'll be making multiple videos to cover so many different aspects of this laptop, but do rest assured all my standard benchmarks have made it into this video. I'm just gonna do even more in-depth tests as I move forward in the coming weeks. So first and foremost, let's kick it off by talking about the build quality. I like the magnesium alloy chassis and I like how they decided to go with the all white keyboard deck rather than the silver keyboard deck and silver keys of last year. Also, it is very thin and light, about the same exact weight as last year, which makes it a fantastic package for the on the go creator since this channel does talk to creative professionals. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the form factor actually hasn't changed. They've only made the screen bezel smaller at the bottom of the screen so that you can have a taller 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen. So you're gonna have the same form factor as last year's model. Per Asus standard well-built laptops, you can see that the bottom cover fits in nicely to the side panels. This is one area that I always have been very impressed with with Asus is they do a good job not only with the build materials, but assembly the laptop in the factory so that it comes out without any catchy edges and any sharp edges that just make a laptop feel cheap. These laptops to me have always felt well put together and have a premium aesthetic. One of the big changes this year to the aesthetic is you're going to have this silver insert of aluminum instead of the magnesium alloy being here. So this actually is a piece of aluminum inserted into the bottom cover of the laptop. Neat little detail is they've added the Zephyrus name with a silver ink rather than having it just blend in with white. So I really like the back vent and the styling there. The model that I purchased does not have the anime dots. It's just simply that iridescent fill-in. So as you move the laptop, you'll see kind of that iridescence come through the little tiny dots in the top cover. The ventilation is really good on this laptop along the back of the chassis and both side panels. Their decision to go with the Ryzen 9 6900HS as well as the AMD Radeon RX 6700S was fantastic. We're seeing increased performance, better battery life, and still great thermals out of this model. In just a minute, we're gonna discuss the full benchmarks, but while we're talking about the thermals, it's worth noting that the AMD-AMD combo of the CPU and the GPU are advantageous in this new model because of AMD's Smart Shift Max. Now, what this does is it basically allows the laptop to share some of the component power. So for instance, the CPU can actually access some of the VRAM when it needs extra performance compared to when the dedicated GPU needs all of that VRAM performance. So because of this, they're able to shift the performance and the use back and forth because they can 
control both components in the laptop. You'll be experiencing all the benefit of that AMD combination nestled beneath the new vapor chamber inside of the G14. Now, I really like the port selection on this year's model. On the left side panel, we have our headphone jack, USB type C and HDMI, as well as your power adapter. And a lot of people aren't fond of the power adapter on the left side. Personally, I don't mind it too much. I just allow the cord to kind of fish out the back and then go around and plug in wherever I need it. But honestly, I can see what people mean by having the power cord on the back. It just keeps it out of the way, especially as you're hooking in other peripherals. On the right side panel, we have two USB type A's, a USB type C and a micro SD card slot. Now the micro SD card slot is actually pretty great because if you have an adapter for a micro SD card, you can load it into a camera, or if you have a drone, you can easily pull that micro SD card out of your drone. And so it's a really nice hint at giving us an SD card slot, even though it's not the standard SD card. Let me know in the comment section if you like the micro SD card slot or you don't, or you wish they would have removed it and given us a full SD, or you wish you would have USB type C. I'm super curious. As we're jumping into the laptop, let's see if we can open and close with one hand. And it is a very easy open and close. Now, one addition to this year's model is you can actually open it up flat. And you know, for me, I actually really like this because if I'm sitting at maybe a coffee shop and I have my laptop really close to me, last year you would you know be only be able to open it about a 45 degree angle. And so you're kind of like looking down the screen at a weird angle. However, if you're close at a coffee shop or you're on an airplane editing some videos, you can just lean back your screen and it just creates a more a natural editing or viewing experience. So I really like that. Now, as I'm glancing down at the screen, I obviously see the brand new 720p webcam. And here's a quick sample so you can see how that looks and how it sounds. This is the webcam on the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14. Gave us a 720p webcam. Though we do have a webcam, it's still 720p. Not exactly stoked about that, but I am stoked that they have a webcam. It actually looks pretty good. I mean, about as good as a 720p can look. Now this webcam does come with Windows Hello, so you can just open your laptop, it recognizes you, and you jump right into your workflow. And you also have a fingerprint reader on the power button. So two ways to access your laptop, or for me, classic, just typing in a password. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the trackpad is a huge bonus if considering this year's model. A glass trackpad, great touch sensitivity. It just feels very nice under my fingers. I would say this is gonna be one of my favorite trackpads of the year. Now, obviously I haven't reviewed every laptop coming out this year, but I love how close they brought it to the edge of the device. They made use of every inch of space for this trackpad, and I really appreciate that, especially as a creator. Now, the keyboard is also an upgrade. It's nice and clicky, good snap back response. It isn't loud though. That's a really big benefit to it. It's not that clicky snap. It's a quiet keyboard with great response. They do have this like, iridescence on the keyboard. So if you, you know, you're sitting in uh, really bright sunlight, you can kind of see this green, purple, blue, you know, reflection off of your keys. I think it's kind of neat, unnecessary, but I love how Asus kind of does these little hat nods when they don't need to. And that is why they are one of my favorite brands uh, for laptops in the past couple of years is they just are always pushing things and doing things that really don't matter, but really make a difference to the consumer. And I really appreciate what, as they, as they make these little adjustments. Now, one area of improvement for some people is that you actually have RGB lighting on your keyboard. Now it's a single phase where you're just having different colors, but it's kind of neat that they now have the RGB in the keyboard and you can either turn it on, turn it off, and you have control of it in the Armory Crate Center as well. Now, of course, classic G14, a lot of options in your function keys to access the keyboard backlighting, turn it up and down. You have fan mode control. You can jump into the Armory Crate Center turn up the volume, mute the mic. There's just a lot of options on the function keys. They make very good use of the function keys. And I, I just think it makes for a good workflow and user experience that they just automatically build all those in for you. Now you can customize the top row of function keys. I usually leave them alone. I'm curious, would you be somebody who customizes the top row of function keys or would you be like me and just leave them standard as normal? Comment below and let me know. Now, speaking of how it looks, let's talk about how it sounds. Here's a quick audio sample of me using the keyboard and trackpad on the Zephyrus G14. Now, before we move on to the screen, as you can see, the upward facing speakers have been moved from the lower half of the keyboard deck to the upper half, just so your hands aren't, aren't accidentally covering them when you're working. Because if you look where the speakers used to be, if you're typing, your hands would basically cover them. So here's a quick audio sample as so you can see what the new speaker setup sounds like.
The color gamut range is something that has slightly improved over last year's model. We're seeing a brighter screen as well at almost 500 nits of screen brightness compared to last year's model at just over 300 nits of screen brightness, which will make working outside or at a coffee shop a much better experience. And we're also getting that 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen, which for me while video editing has been a big bonus. I really appreciate the extra screen space for my timeline, monitoring the project and all my effects panels. Now, as a creative professional, I'm not too concerned with refresh rate, but do keep in mind it has a 120 hertz refresh rate. And you also have a little bit of control over how much it's pushing, whether it's pushing 60 hertz or 120 hertz for battery life. And you can also edit the response time as well inside of the Armory Crate Center. Again, okay, this is one of my favorite parts of this new laptop, and that's the battery life. We have the same 76 watt hour battery. However, because of the optimization between the GPU and the CPU and the further optimized CPU with the Ryzen 9 6900HS, we're seeing improved battery life on the G14. Now I ran it in multiple modes, but I'm going to just show you the standard test that I do in this video. And then in my one month later video, I'm going to run more battery life tests. So make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on that video because I'm actually going to test the laptop. I'm going to run all the tests in different fan modes. For this test, I ran everything at silent eco mode. Uh, so basically I had the GPU turned off and it was just running on the CPU and that's how I got these battery life results. So we have Passmark, we're streaming a YouTube video, and we're running the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark on repeat till the battery goes dead, and we're running a 4K Premiere Pro project on loop during playback until the battery goes dead. All of this at around 35% brightness. Now the fan noise is something that intrigued me. We saw less fan noise on this year's model, but we saw higher thermal temperatures. So there's kind of this like give and take. What are you more sensitive to, fan noise or thermal temperatures? Because in silent mode, we saw around the 89 to 92 degrees Celsius for when you're pushing the laptop hard in say 4K video editing, 3D modeling, or Photoshop work. And really what stood out to me was the fact that I personally liked the lower fan noise because the keyboard didn't get too warm while conducting tasks inside of Photoshop or video editing, but I had less fan noise. So it was a more enjoyable experience using the laptop compared to last year's model that when we were pushing the laptop, you would see anywhere from about 52 to 55 decibels of fan noise while conducting video editing or other creative work. So I would say a big benefit to this year's model is quieter fan noise, but you have that slightly higher temperature. Now, without further ado, let's get into the performance benchmarks. Because of the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HS and the AMD Radeon RX 6700S combination in this laptop, we're seeing improved performance over last year's model in substantially focusing on the multi-core processing, which is really good because more programs are becoming more and more optimized to handle multi-core processing rather than just the single core performance being really high. So that ASUS partnered with AMD to do this combination of CPU and GPU is gonna be a benefit to you getting this year's model. For instance, one of those examples will be After Effects and we'll look at that benchmark here in just a second. Now, as we move on to 3D modeling, the latest RX GPU gave us quite a boost in performance above last year's model. One of the biggest standouts to me was in PTC Creo and SolidWorks. Autodesk Maya and Autodesk 3ds Max did good, but it wasn't a dramatic increase in performance. However, by going with AMD over Nvidia, you can see a dramatic increase in performance over the PTC Creo and SolidWorks. So for me, if you're somebody considering using PTC Creo or SolidWorks, for instance, if you're an architecture student or you're an architecture professional, this would be advantageous to you to go with the G14 with the AMD RX GPU over last year's model with the RTX NVIDIA GPU. Now, as we're sliding over into After Effects, you can see that there's over 100 point increase in performance for After Effects by getting the latest Zephyrus G14. So if you're a big After Effects user, After Effects recently pushed an update that really takes advantage of multi-core processing in their app. And so that's why we're seeing more performance increase because as we saw in Cinebench R23, multi-core was improved this year. And so that is being reflected here in the actual real world benchmark of After Effects. Also, it's important to note that you are getting an extra two gigs of VRAM in your GPU by getting this year's model with the RX 6700S versus last year's model with the RTX 3060 from NVIDIA.
Now taking a look at video editing, I'm quite excited about this laptop because it comes with 16 gigs of RAM and we're still seeing a low amount of drop frames in B-RAW and a pretty low amount of drop frames in RED footage. Now keep in mind that if you would get the 32 gig model, I can anticipate, not confirm yet because I don't have the 32 gig model on me, but I can anticipate you might have zero drop frames in B-RAW, maybe around a thousand drop frames in RED footage by going with the model with 32 gigs of RAM. Now looking at the export times, the export times are good nothing you know extravagant it's a very good export time compared to some other models compared to last year we're going to have about a 30 second improvement on export time compared to last year's model last year's 4k to 4k export was about three minutes and 39 seconds this year's 4k to 4k export is about two minutes and 50 seconds and again that's basically just a h.264 clip put into premiere pro nine minutes and exported out at full quality youtube settings now, to me, the most intriguing thing about the export times this year is no matter if you run it in turbo, performance, or silent, I get the exact same export time, just slightly different temperatures and fan noise. And if you actually go look at Hardware Canucks video, they can confirm that the difference between performance and silent mode as far as how much power the CPU is pushing was very little. But when you push it up to turbo mode, it increases the wattage that the processor is pushing. But as you can see, during the export, this didn't make a big deal. So honestly, if I were you, I would run my laptop in either silent or performance mode. And I would really encourage you to probably just run it in silent mode. It's going to have the lowest amount of fan noise, the coolest temperatures, and really be the best user experience overall. Now, like I said, I'm going to be running even more tests with the different fan modes inside of the different apps to see how different the performance is for each of the fan modes. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that video coming out in about a week or so after I run all those extensive testings. Moving on to Photoshop, we're seeing about a 135 point boost in performance inside of the Puget Systems benchmark. And we're seeing pretty cool temperatures run inside of that program as well. So looking at the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark, we're seeing above 900s for basically every fan mode, silent performance and turbo. And then on battery mode, we're seeing it drop down to around 350 points in the Photoshop benchmark. But then if we go eco and silent mode, but we allow the laptop to be plugged in, we're getting 830 points. So when you turn off your GPU, you're actually only losing about 100 points in performance. So if you wanna keep the laptop running a little bit cooler, around 82 degrees Celsius, rather than running the laptop at about 89 degrees Celsius in silent mode, you can go eco silent mode, get cooler temperatures and less fan noise. So that could be a benefit to you and you're only losing about 100 points in Photoshop. Really the greatest advantage of this year's model is about 20% increase in performance, much better battery life, a larger trackpad for the device, and a larger screen. If you're somebody who's looking for these types of improvements in your machine compared to last year's model, then I would definitely consider picking up the latest Asus Zephyrus G14. Don't miss out on the future videos on the channel as I'll be diving even deeper into testing, giving you my reflections after spending more time with this laptop, and also giving you specific use case videos like 3D modeling and video editing. So make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on those. Otherwise, links are free to make a purchase and likes if this video has brought you some value. I'll see you guys here in the next one.